is like Superman music. <laughs> You know, it's very rare that cops get recognized for doing good things. You see us in the news all the time for, oh, police brutality and this and that. Or so I'm just so happy that, that this happened and, and that it's bringing a positive light to police officers, it's bringing a positive light for female police officers. Yeah. Um, what made you think it was him? I had no idea videos. that he kidnapped anybody. He came in and he wanted to have an event on campus, not uncommon. And he brought his two daughters, again, not uncommon. And I, I had run his name prior to meeting him, so I knew he was convicted for kidnapping and rape. And I knew he was a, a sex registrant, which is when someone's convicted of rape, they have to register as a sex offender, and they have all these rules that apply to them. Now, in and of itself, that, that's kind of normal in my, my profession. I come across people on parole and stuff like that all the time. But what I didn't like was that he had these two young girls with him and the way they were acting towards him. Um, it just, I got an uneasy feeling. So just, just following up on that further after they left, because there was nothing criminal. It was, I didn't, oh, he's a kidnapper. You know, it just, something wasn't right. He was creepy and they were, you know, weird too, you know, kind of acting like almost like a religious cult. You know, and that's something I don't experience every day. I experience weird every day. Every day, um, but not to that extent. And in some of my interviews, I, I, I remember saying that you can read people's eyes very well. As a police officer, we're trained to look at your eyes and anticipate your movements. So I'm looking into his eyes and their eyes, and I couldn't read them for the first time in my career. I could not read these three people's eyes. It was very, very unsettling for me. So that's when I called the parole officer just to let him know. Now I call parole officers all the time. Hey, your guy's over here, he's doing what he shouldn't be doing. I've never gotten a parole officer to call me back. So I was shocked that the parole officer did call me back. Explained to him what happened and that's when he told me that uh, Mr. Garrido did not have kids. And that's when I thought that in my mind, oh, but they were acting like, you know, they didn't seem distressed. They were acting like his kids. But did I just, were these kids kidnapped and were they here against their will? But I didn't really get that feeling, so I didn't understand it. So I told them, I said, you know, they're his kids. They look like him. They have his color eyes. And I didn't get the feeling that they were, you know, being kept against their will. And so he said he would follow up on it. And that's when I got the call later that, I guess JC, who was at home, they had mentioned her during our interview, that she was at home and uh, she had uh, admitted that she had been kidnapped 18 years ago and that the two daughters that I had met were hers and his. And the rest is kind of history. I'm, I'm really looking forward to meeting JC's mother. As a mother myself, um, just thinking of having your kids taken from you, not knowing if they're alive or dead or if they're being tortured. It's almost, it would almost be easier if you knew that your child was deceased versus not knowing. And for 18 years not knowing, I could just imagine what she's going through. So it's going to be overwhelming. And it won't be televised, I hope, because I'll <laughs> cry my eyes out. <laughs>